What is up guys, it's Drek, and this is the Adventure Force Accelerator. So obviously this thing needs a mod guy. That is so cool. Okay, so I took legitimately all of my Patreon money and I bought a brand new DSLR. So hopefully between the lights and this camera, I can see you guys while I'm recording. I want you guys to know that the entire time I've been on YouTube, I've never been able to see myself while I'm recording. But this is a, it's a Canon SL2. Uh, Essa recommended it and it's gonna flip out Viewfinders, I don't, I'm, I'm through the moon. Like this was like all the money that I had from December and this feature alone is worth it. God, I hope this shot looks great. Um, let me know, seriously, comment section down below means a lot to me. Let me know if this footage looks great. So what we're going to, I feel like this is gonna be a distraction now. It's like, I have to acknowledge that there's a real audience that I'm making this video for because I can see you guys, kind of. Um, okay, so, first step, take this off, remove your rival rechargeable thing, but you can't do that until you get rid of the hopper. So let's get rid of the hopper next. Let's pull this out, and we've got a bunch of Phillips head screws to crank through. This is gonna be awesome. Crank through them right here. Alrighty guys, so there are 18 Phillips head screws. They're all silver inside an accelerator. Once you've removed all of them, including the two that are hidden underneath here. So you gotta pop off your team red panel, unless you're crazy. And then there's two in here. Once you've popped all 18 out, you can clamshell this guy open. The entire jam door mechanism is isolated to one side and has no locks, so we don't really have to fool with that at all. We might remove this piece entirely because I feel like it, uh, it prevents us from doing something, but like moving this flipper, but other than that, we, we will claw that out. We can uh, take a look inside here at our internal. So our rev switch just fell out, it clearly has its own locking mechanism here. This is the, if you rev, this goes up and you can pull the trigger. We don't need a trigger lock, so we're gonna go ahead and remove that. And then this down here is our rev switch. That is a crazy tiny rev switch in there. So we're gonna have to remove that entirely and of course replace it with a higher amperage model. Now up here we have the issue with the blaster, which is that this return is so wimpy. The thing that's actuating this return is actually the trigger spring. Is it? The trigger spring pushes forward. There's also a tiny extension spring down in here which should be returning it. Both of those are very weak springs, so we're probably going to uh, improve this one with just a spring from a regular hardware store or something like that. Now, the flywheel system, these look identical to rival flywheels, but I've heard a lot of people saying things about how is there really a round in here? That's hilarious. There is a blue rival round in here. I've heard people saying that these are misaligned. That is possible. I've also heard that if you take this up to a 3S, these flywheels are of a cheaper material than genuine Nerf flywheels. So I said, I've got a busted nemesis. Why not pop this out and use that to see if we can't put genuine Hasbro flywheels in here to completely overcome the issue. We might even tack a little bit of Loctite in there as well. Everything else is super simple. We've just got to rewire. This is obviously an electronic lock for the magazine and then this is, uh, this is the electronic lock that the jam door attaches to and we want to get rid of that as well. So we'll get rid of the physical piece. We will also get rid of the electronic component and just streamline all the way through this system. This is going to be cool. Let's go.
Okay, so now that we've completely removed the system, all that's left is this one last Phillips head screw, and all this does is lock the gray plastic onto the green body plastic. Since we plan on giving this a slight aesthetic upgrade, I think we're gonna have to remove that as well. Because the gunmetal actually looks pretty cool. So let's get rid of that. Now we have an empty shell, completely gutted electronics, and we can work with whatever we want to work with. Let's go. <laughs> so new camera, new problems. But you can see here that what I was trying to say is that we've set the switch in with polysilicate and the orientation of it is kind of funky. You could do this with epoxy putty too, but it's weird just because of how this rev switch works. However, we've gotten an excellent clicky response for our rev. And then up here, you can see that we've replaced one spring and then another spring with one out of just a Lowe's kit. And then I actually replaced one of the electronic locks, even though it's not attached to anything, because I liked the little bit of debounce friction that it has in there, holding in not only the hopper, but more importantly, the rival magazines. Other than that, we have actually replaced the flywheels with Zeus flywheels, and we've got leads of proper wire coming off. Good to go. Alrighty guys, so this is my finished accelerator modification and nobody's gonna doubt what team I'm on now, right? So it's obviously got a finger red paint job with some dry brush silver. Now as it plays off the light, you should be able to get a better appreciation for just how cool that looks, but the dry brush silver is hot. Like it gives it kind of a worn battle finish and doesn't impact the overall texture at all. It also lets you do things like highlight all the contouring in the motor port up here, which is really nice. Now, blaster will rev and fire with the uh, the jam door open now, which is pretty cool, and it still is completely cross compatible with both rival magazines and the hopper. A bunch of this is gunmetal detailing, so like obviously we repainted this, the battery door, we painted two of the side panels gunmetal, and that really was just to match the paneling that's already on the blaster. So there's paneling here and here, and that all looks pretty consistent. We left plenty of orange on for our traditional Halloween style paint job, also because I intend to use this at an SCNC war, I wanted that bright orange front end just to be abundantly clear. Now, we've micro switched it and added torsion to the trigger so it's snappy but the big thing is with these new wheels it's running 3s and when I say it's running 3s it's getting like 140 FPS at least with headshot ammo when I cronied it it's doing some serious serious performance it's also now Alrighty, so we've obviously gone ahead and loaded up a 7 clip so that we can show you that even though we're blocking our line of sight, it is now chambering and firing these nicely, not just gravity fed anymore. Solid performance and then you can easily switch back to your dark zone hopper, like that is sweet. So we fixed a lot of the issues that were with this and taken it up to 3S performance. This is now a fully fledged mini like Nemesis. This is a contender in any rival competition. Like this is a serious primary. And it's just got almost like a halo feel. I, I hate to say that, but like it reminds me a little bit of like a miniature MA5B with this heavy front end, this aggressive barrel, and then like how compact the back end is. Like with the paint job, it looks very sci-fi, very futuristic, very cool. You can see that I've added my signature onto this panel down here and this panel down here because they were blank and didn't have anything else going on. But ultimately, I'm really happy with this. There's tons of space for a LiPo in here. You can put realistically whatever 3S you wanted inside because you're competing with D batteries like they don't even make lipos this big as far as I know. I mean, I know that they make them, but we never use them for nerfs. So you've got a ton of space in there. I need to add foam because my lipo is rattling around just a little bit, but very happy with this aesthetically. Performance obviously can't be beat. Uh, it's just standard performance modded 3S rival plus a little bit. Like one, 139, 140-ish is a very interesting top end for a blaster like this, but I'm, I'm thrilled. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this modification guide and build. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. Like it definitely doesn't replace Sauron, but I don't know if I can find it in my heart to sell it. So we'll have to wait and see. It'll probably go to an SE and C war, and then after that, maybe off to Patreon land. Haven't decided. Thanks for watching. Much love. Nerf on Drek out.